All right, so thankfully with the teardown, everything's going pretty well. I did unfortunately split one rail. Don't tell dad. <laughs> Nine to 10 million tons of furniture are treated as trash in the US every year. You wanna see what furniture should look like? You're in the right place. This series is for the creative viewer looking for inspiration. Great find, it was gonna be in the landfill. Oh, I know. And now it's gonna be in your house. Horrible, man, yeah. we're gonna throw it in the trash. We are transforming rejected furniture into one of a kind pieces. So watch this father and son team come up with ideas you've probably never even thought about. Hey, Grant and I are so excited to tell you about our first sponsor, that Sensi LED lights. Yeah, these things are awesome. We've been using them for a long time and we'll continue using them because of their great features. That's right, and you're gonna get three great features yourself when you get yours. One, you're gonna save on energy costs. And who doesn't wanna do that? Longevity, these bulbs last so much longer than you may realize. And the other one is convenience. When you install this bulb, you forget about it. Yeah. Because when the sun goes down, these bulbs come on, and when the sun comes up, they go off. Right, so we go over all the features that this Sensi bulb offers in another video, and you can find that video in the link in the description below. And when you check that out, we want you to do that. You're gonna get 30% off of your LED lights from Sensi. So get them today. Yeah, do it. Okay, man, I'm finished here, and I do want to get started on a project. I have a great one. Yeah. I want to do the outdoor mammoth frame. We can't do that one. Why not? Unfortunately, we don't have the fabric for it. So we do have some gray fabric if you want to substitute it. No, but... I don't, because the orange was great. We never did order that one. No. I hope I can still find that. I hope so. I know, but I'll, I'll get on that one right away. Okay. You have nothing in the shed. Nothing in the shed. We do have some frames that I need to tear down to for the bones. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the wood, the springs, and I need to get on that soon because we're running out of storage. Okay, that's just the stuff we found on the curb. Exactly. Gotta tear that up. So the only one we have left is the silver back because we know what we want to do with that one. Yep, we do. So let's pull that one down. We'll get started on that. Okay. okay? And I'll start tearing it up and looking it over. I can see right now it needs spring work. <laughs> Okay. Have fun. Yeah. Well, you're going to help me. Uh, I don't know about that. There you are. All right, Pop. So okay, what are we going to do for this project? We're going to make it look beautiful. We know we want to use this Royal Blue Velvet. Okay. Okay. Which I think is, you know, has a lot of... It's got a nice character to it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very good nice. Pop. Yeah. So where's it going to go? Only on the inside. That's it. Inside, back, seat cushion, seat front. That's it. Excellent. So contrast that, we're going to be using this Mylar. Now this Mylar is actually not a fabric. It's a film. And if you no. don't mind handing that to me real quick. Yep, there it has the exact same kind of texture to a um, photograph film. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is not going to be good for upholstering if we left it alone. Yeah, you can't use that. We can't use that. It's too brittle. So, what we needed to do is put it on a backing, and we use a velvet, or actually a vinyl, excuse vinyl. me. Mm -hmm to put it as a backing so we can reupholster with it. Nobody has done this before as we know of. Nope. So we wanted to challenge that. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now I like this uh, contrast, the royal blue against that I do chrome. too. That's why we're calling it silverback. Exactly. Okay, because it has a silver pack. Mm, pretty simple. Yeah. Now we need to tie all this in and how we're gonna do that in the beginning, mm -hmm. we were playing around with the idea of doing decorative nails. Right, because we have decorative nails here. Now this is French natural. Right. Okay, there's millions of them out there. That's what this uh, finish is called, or uh, natural French, or French natural. That's French it. natural, yeah. Yeah, so I'll flip it around, doesn't matter. <laughs> so we were gonna use what they call nickel right. decorative nails, an inch apart, okay? Make exactly. it a little bit more interesting. But, you know. It's been done before. It's kind of boring looking. It is kind of boring. But you, you, we're gonna have to hide the staples. See, right here, there's no pool underneath here. Mm -hmm. So there's staples behind these decorative nails. So these right here are hiding the staples underneath. Now you might be thinking, okay, great. Well, you guys could use GIMP, you could use Double Weld. Again, all that has been done before. GIMP is ancient, so. Yeah, it's really ancient. We don't want to make this just a regular old piece. We're trying to make our own little spin, a unique, one-of-a-kind piece. Right, less likely to head to the dump when it needs to be reupholstered because it has more value to someone because it was done so well. Right, so instead of doing the decorative nails in the front, what are we gonna be doing? We're gonna be taking this and just folding it over Okay. In the front, skipping the decorative nail entirely. Mm -hmm. Okay, to give it a cleaner look. And actually okay. have the mylar right underneath of it. So the only thing that's breaking up the velvet and the mylar is this little strip of wood. Right, after we sandblast it. After we sandblast it. And we don't know what the color of this wood is gonna be after we sandblast it. So that's no. gonna dictate whether we actually stain it, we paint it, or we just keep it as is. Leave it natural, put a clear coat on it. 
Right. Okay. So instead of the, the nickel uh, nails, yeah. we decided to do something a little bit different. Think of a shoelace going in and out. So that means mm -hmm. before you grab yours, we have to drill an inch holes all the way through an inch apart. Right. So again, just like your shoelaces, little holes for your shoelaces, we're going to have to go all the way through from the inside to the outside of the actual furniture. We've never done this before. No. Okay. So we could completely screw this thing up or it can be extremely cool. We're hoping the latter. Well, it will be, <laughs> but we could screw it up now. We could screw it It'll up. Be good. So, so you want to do, I want to do a twine in between this. This is for springs. This is for spring tying. What you could do is just run the twine back and forth, inside and out. So again, it's only for decorative purposes. Yeah. And it looks pretty good across both. And I say pretty good, it looks great in my opinion. Right, right, it does look good. And the, it's gonna look great depending on the wood. Right, the and tone. that's what dad's a little bit nervous about. So, about. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so what he decided to do is do a ball chain instead. Well, I'm talking to you, man, and you inspired me because I saw your chain there, which is right here around yep. your neck. And I thought, oh, that would be extremely cool. A larger diameter ball, stainless steel, easy to get on the internet, yeah. and not that, not that expensive. So I figured, you know what, that would look kind of cool having the ball and chain going in and out. Or the, uh, was it ball chain? Yep, ball chain. Ball chain going in and out like a shoelace, if you will, just like the twine that he wants to use. And that would tie in the mylar reflective um, film on the, other, on the outside. Right, and my reasoning for the twine is I like that it's a natural material that will break up the metallic of the actual mylar and then tie in the velvet. So we decided it'd be best for you guys to decide which one we should do. And I think you guys should probably wait until we get closer to when the wood color is, mm -hmm. but you'll have an opportunity to vote for your choice until then. All right, what's, what do you think right now? Do you think the twine or do you think the ball chain? Right. Larger e diameter, by the way, not e this small one. Exactly, and they both are gonna go from the inside to the outside and back and forth, back and forth, like a stitch. And again, it's only for decorative purposes. Right. So now, we have a good amount of stuff that we have to work on. The last thing is, go the ahead. The legs. Yep, exactly. We don't know if we're gonna keep these legs or not. I hate to destroy them, but they are kind of dated. They have this groove, this um, design there that right. does make it look kind of old. Yeah, the cutout really does date this thing. Now, if we actually sandblast it and like, hey, the wood doesn't look that bad, it might be fine, we can just move on with it. Right. If not, we have a steel tube that we wanna go ahead and use mm -hmm. instead or something else. We'll figure it out along the way. Right. So those are the ideas that we're going to uh, mull over or at least work on. Right. And uh, the first thing to do is to rip all this, all this, all this, all this, all this old leather off. Exactly. Okay. That was so easy. <laughs> and we have an appointment. Yeah. We got to get our hair cut. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you shortly. Hey, before I get started tearing down the love seat behind us, Give you a couple of tips one if you do have decorative nails sometimes they hold on to the last second and when you pry them out they shoot across the room so avoid having to go around picking them all up use duct tape or strong tape like this one here just put it right over top and keep on pulling out those nails and it'll stick to the tape and not fly across the room the other thing is if you have a curvature back like this love seat is here you notice there's two seams on the left and the right side so sometimes it can be difficult to get them in the right spot use it as a template if it's in decent enough shape so then you can avoid wondering where to put those seams. One more thing, I'm gonna sandblast this as Grant and I already told you. And if there's foam, just foam, meaning there's no muslin cover, then I don't wanna get sand all in that foam. So I might have to take all the padding off, which I really don't wanna do. And it's probably not worth the time putting muslin over top to avoid it. So let's see what we got when I tear into it. All right, so as dad tears down the love seat, I need to get on and breaking down the frames that we have for the lumber and springs in storage, because we need to make room for new frames. Once when I start doing that, I need to make sure I save as much wood as possible. Since we're using old frames, obviously this wood's pre-cut. And if I cut it any shorter, we may not be able to use it for new builds. And that's just gonna be a waste of time. So what I need to do is make sure I cut at the seams with a sawzall or drill out the current dowels and take out the screws, obviously, that are holding the frame together and then break the glue with a hammer. Either one could work. I'm gonna use whatever is best for that certain circumstance where I find myself in, because sometimes the glue may hold really tight and if I hit it too hard, I could break the actual wood. And I don't want that either. 
So I'm gonna find out what's the best method to do when it comes to that circumstance and move forward with that. Before I get to actually breaking down the wood frame though, I need to get off the springs and the foundation material because that's holding it together too. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so thankfully with the teardown, everything's going pretty well. I did unfortunately split one rail, don't tell dad, but I knew it was split beforehand. It was a little bit weak. There was a dowel in the center, and once when I hit it, it broke. So with that being said, I'm gonna continue on breaking down the rest of the rails, hopefully not splitting them, but with the saws off. So I have to cut where the seams are and or drill out the dowels so I can get those away uh, free from each other. The only thing is I wanna make sure I get all the screws out of the way first. They did screws and dowels. If you didn't know this already, dowels are actually the preferred method to putting together a frame. It makes it stronger because it's wood to wood with the wood glue making it as one, almost like it grew that way. Instead of screws, which is just pushing this wood aside and holding it on with the threads. So that being said, I need to get those screws out of the way. Go ahead and cut or drill out the dowels and break it free and see how much wood or lumber we can get out of this frame for future projects. So let's see what happens. <laughs> That's fun. Hey, before I go further, I want to take a moment out to tell you that if you're working on the bottom of your piece of furniture, be careful because you could have something that's called a clinch it. And what it is, is a fast, easy way to get coil springs in their place. But sometimes when the, when the technician uses the tool to install the coil spring, the sharp edges, which is kind of like a staple, doesn't bend all the way down and they'll stick out. My father and I one time were picking up a piece of furniture and he cut his hand badly helping me move one. So be careful, especially if you have kids or pets that run up underneath your chair or sofa, because it's gonna hurt. There's one way you can get around this if you really have this problem, is take a piece of Daycron batting like this, take the dust cover off, lay this over top of it, put back the dust cover, and it shouldn't be a problem, it should be smooth. So I wanted to bring that to your point, or point that out to you, no pun intended. It says Wackawana. Leather, 6, 1978. I'm sure that's the date, so June 78. Okay, as you can see, the straps here have come undone. These metal straps are holding the springs in place right here, or at least giving them support, not holding them in place. The clenchets that I was talking to you about earlier, that's holding the springs in place. These straps are giving them support. They broke. They're simple staples is all they are. So I'm gonna take these off, okay? This Canvas, synthetic canvas can stay perfectly fine. But what I'm gonna do is take some jute webbing, the red stripe, for that's for seating, and I'm gonna do a basket weave later on. But I don't wanna do that now because if I sandblast this, up, what we are gonna sandblast it, I'm gonna be hitting the wood here, I could damage the jute webbing as well. So I'm gonna to have to do that later on after sandblasting. But these are gonna go, this is gonna stay, and now that's the next step is take the outside back completely off the cotton that is and uh, see what we got in the inside. Okay, that was a really good day. Yeah. It took me a long time with all those uh, decorative nails on the outside. Those are a pain of butt to take out. Well, they are. And I had staples all behind her, just about an equal amount. That's why I wasn't doing it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so what'd you get out of the uh, find that was at the curb? Yeah, so that frame, we tore it down. I got out 19 rails, wow. six blocks, four strips of plywood, two spring systems. Get this, 
54 screws, and that was including the six screws they had per leg. Was that 54 screw ups of yours? Uh, no, no, just, just screws. Like, oh, okay, I got it. Right. <laughs> and also four so so legs. So so legs. Just like that, that joke. That was so so. Oh, that was a good one, Thank actually. You. 54 screws, we can use them in other applications as well. Yeah. That wood is a solid wood. There's a lot of wood out there in these frames going to the dump just to simply rot. Exactly. It's not necessary, so we're trying to make a little. Uh, fun out of things that we can uh, find. Yeah, and that was just a chair. So imagine a sofa wow. or love seat or sectional for that matter of fact. That's yeah. a lot That's of true. waste. That's true. Good point. Hey, I like these little trivia things. This was a plastic sleeve. You can see the stain on the outside back. Yeah. It was in the. It was on the outside back. I pulled out the piece of paper in here, and it was 1978. At least a leather stamp said 1978. Okay, okay. So that's 42 years old. So was that on the leather? Yeah, well, the 1978 was on the on the leather. It said 78, uh, June 78. So it went to Light Parker Furniture Company. And I'm going to butcher this, but Conshohocken, Pennsylvania. Conshohocken or whatever, Pennsylvania. And it uh, sounds Native American, so unfortunately I'm butchering it. I'm sorry. But it was the Hickory Chair Company that made this. Okay. But look at the frame. Yeah. I mean, it's still got, uh, what, 20, 30, maybe even more years out Many of it. It's 42 left. years yeah. old. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's a great frame, and that's what we're hoping is to prolong it as long as possible with our new design. Absolutely. So all the back's done, Yeah. okay, ready for sandblasting. But the inside, I still got to take all those decorative nails off. I want to see what kind of muslin is behind the leather because I really don't want to take off that padding unless you're willing to come and help us out. And, right. Uh, we'd really like that, actually. Because we can save it. It doesn't have to go to the landfill. It's still good and can still, well, still offer you some... still trying to help us out. Oh, well, I mean, come over <laughs> anyway. No, you're right. Yeah. Right. You can still save it. We are going to save it, but I might need to protect it from the sandblasting because we don't want that sand caught in there. Exactly. And we don't know how thick that actually muslin is because the one no. on the outside arm is quite thin right now and kind probably of, a lot of sand is going to get through there. It will. You're yeah. right. It's kind of like a gauze. It is. You know, like for a bandage, you know. Exactly. It's too thin. So that's okay. the next step, but we need to find out what the wood is going to look like after we sand it because that could really change or radically change what the finished piece is going to look like. Right. Because we have different options and once we know what that wood is, it can change what it is. We're going to be careful too, sandblast. You can rip that wood up. Oh yeah. You know, so it's going to be fun. Oh yeah. So we might paint it, stain it, or just leave it alone. Right. So stay tuned for next week to find out what's going to happen to this furniture. Now, if you want to find something else to watch, we have a Scandinavian chair that we gave away to Mike that we did yes. previously. So if you want to check out that episode, there's a couple episodes for that and see how that turned out. Go ahead and check that out. That was a curb find. That was a curb find. It's going into the trash. I guarantee you that was a high quality piece. Yeah. Very nice. That thing's got at least another 20 years in it. Definitely. At least under normal care if you don't sit in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Me and my jokes. Oh, yeah. All right. So look, please give us a thumbs up. Pass it on. Share it with friends. And subscribe, um, subscribe. so you can see how this thing turns out and our other future projects. Because guess what? That lumber that we did, that's going to be new furniture that maybe you can win. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we'll see you next time.